to start off the show, to jumpstart all of this. We've got to get started with what transpired Thursday night in Denver, Colorado. Nikola Jokic recorded his 20th triple-double of the season last night as the Nuggets withstood a fourth-quarter surge to beat the Celtics 115-109 in Boston. Many fans viewed that game as a finals preview. While Jalen Brown showed out with 41 points for Boston, his running mate and MVP candidate Jason Tatum, quite frankly, came up small, putting up just 15 points to go along with his eight assists. Denver completed the season series sweep of Boston, and some believe Jokic may have taken the MVP from Tatum based on last night's results. I'm not going to go as far as say that Jokic took the MVP, I'm going to go as far as to say he may, of course, Tatum, the MVP. If you are the best player on the best team, usually that categorizes you as one of the elite candidates for league MVP honors, which is why I had Jason Tatum at the top of the list. But I can't ignore the fact that in the two times, the Boston Celtics, the clear favorites in a lot of people's eyes to win it all this year, the two times they faced Denver, they've lost both games. And in those two games, Jason Tatum has come up small, shooting 23% from three-point range, about 32% from the field, averaging uh, significantly less, like 18 and a half points in those two games. That's unacceptable. When you are trying to vie for the MVP and you're going up against a reigning defending champion who's also a former league MVP and is the reigning NBA Finals MVP, you got to show out. And once again, Jason Tatum did not do that. Not only did he not show out, Jalen Brown did show out. And because of that, it's reminiscent of what transpired in the finals in 2022 when Golden State went up against Boston and Jalen Brown was balling out and Jason Tatum wasn't because that reminded everybody of the deficiencies in his game. And it's really not about his game. It's about his unwillingness to steal moments when the moments are there to be had. That's what happened to Jason Tatum the other day, and that's what we can't ignore. We just can't. I'm looking at this brother right here averaging better than 27 points per game. Clearly the best player on the best team in the NBA. Due for a $300 plus million dollar contract, especially since Jalen Brown got $304 million last summer. You know Jason Tatum, who's available for the Supermax, is going to get that bag himself. He's going to get that offer from the Boston Celtics. There's no way in hell he's going to avoid it or reject it. He's going to take the offer. You've got a situation where Jason Tatum this season was in position to capture league MVP honors, an NBA championship, an NBA Finals MVP, a $300 plus million dollar contract, then play for USA and win an Olympic gold medal. These are all the things that are available for him. And now, based on what transpired Thursday night, the MVP has been taken off the list. And why can we say that? Because we've seen Shea Gilgis Alexander and what he's been doing in Oklahoma City. In about 60 games, 45 times, he scored at least 30, 30 points. So Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's at Oklahoma City as one of the top three seeds in the Western Conference. He's an MVP candidate. We saw Carl Anthony Towns go out with the meniscus tear, and he's expected to be out until the playoffs begin. So what does Anthony Edwards do in Indianapolis? What does he do? He goes on a court, he drops 44, and on top of it all, had such a spectacular block to save the victory and preserve victory for the Minnesota Timberwolves. It was a block that even eclipsed LeBron James from years ago blocking Andre Iguodala in the NBA Finals Game 7. The only thing that was better was the moment in which LeBron James did it. But that block from Anthony Edwards to save the game where he went up and literally hit his head to the rim, that's how high this Skywalker elevated. It's the play of the year. It's the play of the year. And when you look at Anthony Edwards and what he's doing with Minnesota being 44 and 19, also one of the top two seeds in the Western Conference, what are you going to do? He's got to be in the MVP race. Him and Shea Gilgis Alexander. And then with Jokic balling the way that he's balling, now he's got to be top three as the reigning defending NBA champions that's been lurking and lurking and lurking all season long and now moving up the charts, a third seed, just a game or two out for the number one seed in the Western Conference. Think about this for a second. You're Jason Tatum, and you know all of that's going on, and you answer the call with 15 points. You attempt just 13 shots. Jalen Brown attempts more than twice as many shots as you. How could that happen? How could you let that happen if you're Jason Tatum? It's a missed opportunity. And I think last night, it's not definitive, but I think one could easily say it cost him the league MVP. So now it's about a championship. It's about an NBA Finals MVP, it's about that bag, and it's about an Olympic gold medal. He's got four categories that he can confiscate, but he's got to get his mind right 
in terms of really, really going after these moments and seizing it, because that's what superstars do. They seize moments.